Hey guys, welcome to this new Road to Ryzen 3000 video. And well, it's finally here. It's a month after launch date, so everyone who said in my previous video about Ryzen or AMD having delivery or maybe yield issues and who basically made me out to be another fool, maybe think again. Yes, there is high demand, but if you order it on launch day and you get it a month later, the high demand isn't the issue, the low supply is. But this video isn't about that, and well, it's here, it's finally here. And um, I'm really ready to replace this uh, this old machine. This was okay, uh, the Ryzen 1700 or 1700X was a great processor. The machine itself though had a few issues. The fans I used, well, those were uh, the fans included with my Alpha Cool Ice Bear, Ice, Ice Bear, whatever it's German, 360, and some NCXT LED fans because hey, I thought LEDs were cool. I used to use all Noctua fans, and I think together with the case, that's been the biggest disappointment in my old PC. It was loud. It was noisy. I had to keep the uh, the front uh, front cover off because it was starve all airflow completely and have to run fans at maximum. So noise wise, that really sucked. Take a listen to this. This is ramping up from idle to load. So you can imagine I got quite annoyed with that after a while. So one of the things about this video, Noctua actually agreed to sponsor me. And they sent me six of their new NFA12X25PWM fans. And these are basically like the old Noctuas I, I used to use. Here's a picture of my previous gaming PC. Um, well, the best fans out there in my opinion. But there's uh, six going in this build, and thank you Noctua very much for sponsoring them. And you just heard the sample, how it was before. So when the build is done, we'll do a sample how it sounds now. Some other components, I'll be using the Asus ROG Crosshair 8 Hero motherboard and a Lee and Lee uh, PC011 Dynamic. Now that case is mostly intended to be water cooled, and although the Ice Bear isn't is a water cool, it's an AIO. Um, but I have some unique ideas for that case involving a lot of LEDs, but none of those are going to be in the products I use. Of course, the motherboard will have some LEDs, and I'm using a kit of uh, Trident Z RGB I already have. Uh, which also has RGBs, but other than that, nothing will have added RGB, especially not the fans, because sacrificing fan quality and with that noise for RGBs, well, it's just not worth it to me anymore. So, I'm not sure how this video is going to turn out. Uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to make it a full build video with the whole time lapse and everything like that. On the other hand, maybe I will. Um, but I'll try and show you some stuff and well, let's get this PC built together or rather Parts built, built together and parts transplanted from my old PC So let's get to it One of the things you should regularly do is clean your PC and well, I've neglected doing this for the last year But since I'm going to be using components from this old PC in the new one it's a good time to do that. Now, not sure you can see how dusty it is, but it has certainly become dusty. Look at those SSDs. Jesus. And, well, I'm using a data vac. This is a little weed. This is a uh, blowing vacuum, I guess you could say, or a blower. And, uh, well, it's specially meant for this purpose. So, let's uh, blow out some, blow out some dust.
So, I have too many SSDs, namely uh, four, let me get the other one, that I want to get into the chassis. And there is official mounts for two in the front, but I want to make, mount my radiator there, and two in the back, but I kind of, you know, want to keep those open for future options. But this little power supply support bar can actually be moved, and then you can fit two SSDs, those that don't really get warm, so you can just put them in there, and the power supply fits on top like that. Awesome. Of course, if you have to do maintenance, this is a bit of a bother because you have to unmount the power supply. But since these are SSDs, eh, that doesn't happen too often. If you haven't used Noctua fans before, they come with a lot of accessories, such as this Y cable, which is often very useful, or even if you don't, if you're unable to do PWM control or stuff like that with a, uh, well, this is a extension cable because the cable on the fan itself is uh, pretty short. Um, but they also come with a low noise adapter, for instance, or another extension cable if you want to make it a really long cable. Another thing that's cool is that they have these rubber mounts to dampen noise. But if you're mounting it on a radiator, like I'm doing here, uh, they come with these rubber grommets, which basically seal off and make a perfect seal with the fan itself providing the best static pressure possible and also still dampening noise another thing where is it oh here it is uh, these come with a y splitter so one to two but i want to use uh, three fans so i bought these uh one to three fan splitters pwm so four pin uh, you can buy these on AliExpress, I'll have a link in the description. Each of these fans is, let's see what it says, 0 0.14 amps, and a general CPU fan socket or something like that can easily handle half an amp or an amp even. So you can easily use these to, well, in my case, hook up three fans to the CPU fan header so they will always spin the same speed. Check that out in the description. Well, actually, check uh, check all the components out in the description. I'll have everything listed there. And uh, let's continue with the time lapse. Okay, first time turning it on, it all looks great, and I have the basics hooked up, so let's see if this actually works. Let's see, it 
petit bas plus. You can hear the water cooling and the noctuas. Although if this is full tilt for the noctuas, that's already a lot quieter than the quiet was for the other ones. Or the ones I had before. Let's see, it's trying to post. Okay. First boat boot can often take a while. Hmm. A white LED came on. Not sure what that means. No image as of yet. Uh, it's been about a minute. Oh, okay. What's happening now? SA. 5A, something like that. Okay. It's running through its posts right now. And seems to get stuck on whatever that is. Let me uh, try and figure this out. Okay. I think I figured it out. So let's turn it on again. And as you can see now, CPU, memory, GPU, boot. Yep, and we're in the BIOS. So the only thing I changed is I moved my Mellanox Connect X3 from the bottom PCI slot to the one above it, or the X16 slot above it. So for some reason, it doesn't want to run through the chipset. Now, this isn't really a big issue. Airflow is still good this way. I'd rather move it down and give the GPU a little bit more airflow, but this should work just fine also, and I'll check if a BIOS help update helps for this issue. So, it's done, and it's working. I tried the PCI card after the BIOS upgrade, but that didn't really resolve the problem, so I'll be running it like this for now, but that's fine. Um, the build went pretty smoothly. I really love this uh, Lee and Lee PC011 dynamic. And, uh, well, I had a kind of different idea for cooling than most people use, I think. So I went from top to bo uh, from bottom to top. They're all Noctua NF NFA2... I forget that model number. Their model numbers used to be easier, but these are all NFA12 times 25 PWM fans. And those are basically the ultimate fan, as they call them, because they're good as a chassis fan, but also as a radiator fan for strat static pressure. And I have a uh, suspicion that rubber grommet you saw me apply during installation has something to do with that, because that basically isolates the fan and it can really push the air through the radiator. Um, I think the build looks great, and I'll show you some B-roll. And while I was at Camp Zone, Laser Dingen, that's a Dutch name, was there and he has a 60 watt um, CNC laser. So what you can do with that, I took the two panels from the Lee and Lee and I basically, well, I laser etched in my logo. So the small logo on front and the full logo uh, on the side. And that is really awesome. I mean, gives it a slight unique look. Um, but you can see that I still have the fans op fan openings here open. Well, I have a plan with those, and I'm still working on it. But once I'm done, this case will probably have over 1,000 LEDs inside. None on the products and stuff like that, but all externally, or well, in the case. But yeah, well, you're going to see later on. So make sure to stay subscribed for that. 
like the video if you liked it. I know these are kind of long, but I try and show all the technical details that some bigger YouTubers skip nowadays. And if you want to help support the channel, I'll have affiliate links to most of these products in my description. And um, I'm going to start using this PC because the 3900X, the, the 32 gigs of memory, the nice 360 AIO cooler, the Crosshair 8, uh, there's a 970 EVO 1 terabyte in there. And then you saw me adding the 3 times 500 gig SSDs and 1 times 1.5 terabyte SSD. There's a 10 gigabit NIC. This thing is, well, it's supposed to be awesome, and I think it will be. So I'll end the video with a sound sample. Um, I basically made in the same position as I did before. The last PC, or the last build, was on the silent profile, and this one is on the silent profile. Also, I'll run the same benchmark to let it ramp up, and let's see what the difference is. And then after that, I'll try and do my benchmarking video to see how much faster this thing really is or isn't. Thanks for watching again. Catch you next time. Bye bye.